All right, believe it or not, we're pretty far along in the modeling in our scene. You know, if we jump back into the scene and look and see that, like, yeah, okay, most of what's on the screen right now are these columns. So the fact that we're almost done with this column means that we're pretty far along in the modeling in the scene. We had a lot more steps to do here, but but this is sort of the, the hard work of the modeling almost done. I'm going to make one deviation that is in the written instructions but isn't here in my little sample column. We're going to add another little bevel to the top of this because I want to show you something else about the bevel. So I'm going to select that base now, which is our capital, we took it and we flipped it upside down, hit the tab key to enter into the edit mode, and I'm in face select mode here, I'm going to just collect, click on this top face here, and we're going to add another little pad up on top of this. So I'm going to hit the E key to extrude, and then immediately hit the enter or return key to drop it right where it is, because now I can hit the S key and scale that new face out a little bit. I'm just going to put it, yeah, something like that's fine. Put it like there, hit the E key, and extrude it up again just a little bit. like Something like that looks fine. So we've got this little edge. Because what we're going to want to do is add a bevel here. But we're not going to add this, the, the curved bevel like we have here. We're going to make it a cove bevel. So in order to select these edges here, I'm going to hit the 2 key. That's going to get me into the uh, edge select mode. And remember the way to select a whole loop around there is to hold down the Alt or Option key. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and then click on one of these edges. And because I'm holding Alt or Option down, it's going all the way around that shape. The circle is now complete. And remember the keyboard shortcut for bevel. We're going to bevel this with Control or Command B to bevel. And then I'm just going to squeeze this in here. And you can see what it's already done. I have it already set up in the way that we want it to be. And that's because this shape mode down here, this little menu here, is a, a way that we can change the curve. So it could be just a 90 degree curve, which is kind of pointless because that's what we had to begin with. Or we can come along here and curve it more and more and more and more. And we're, eventually we're going to get to the point where it's going to start turning it inside out. And that's really what we're after right there. So, you know, point one something or whatever is about right. Um, and again, you can add more segments if you want, but we don't need to. Four is plenty enough. Four, five, whatever. Two is a little harsh, but um, something like four looks pretty good. So that's a nice way to get a little bit of co cove molding, a concavity to the bevel is just to turn that slider down to the point where it turns the shape inside out. Now what we're going to do is hit the three key again and grab this little top portion, and we're going to extrude out this little bit. I'm just going to hit E, and I'm going to type in one. I'm just going to give us you know, rather than, than make all the arches slightly random, just E1, that just extrudes that face out. So it left that little edge there for our bevel, and it's added this basically a cube on top of this. Now, this is something that, a step that, if we're thinking ahead about how we want to add this array, because we want to add the array. I'll show you what we're doing right now and why. You can see there's some columns missing here, right? I wanted, when we make the array, it's going to be all of these filled in here, and it's going to block this part of our scene, but we want to break a few of these. We want to, you know, get prune the columns a little bit. And a, a way to make them really easy to select later on is to do this next step. I'm going to go ahead and hit the, uh, hold the S key down here and click on all the faces, the top five faces of this cube. So I'm not going to worry about the bottom there. So I basically grabbed a cube. It's almost like a default cube sitting on top of this. But what I want to do is separate this from the rest of the model. So I'm going to hold on the Y key. I'm going to hit the Y key to separate it. So now if I were to grab it, I could like lift it off. So if I didn't do that, I'll just show you what that would look like without that step. If I were to do G, it would go, you know, have this kind of like gooey edge there. That's not what we want. I'm going to hit the Y key to break it off of the model. So now if I hit the G key and move it around, I can put it wherever I want in the model. And the reason why we're making this little break here. Another way you could do this, if you accidentally include something in your model or you want to take out a portion of one model and make it separate like we might do for later on for the base. We could come in and grab the base and make a broken base that's all by itself somewhere. Those are really handy things to do. Um, that would be doing this step, hitting the Y key to split it and then separating it by holding down the P key. So separate by selection in this case. We don't want to do this step right now because we want to keep this as part of the, the overall column here. But the first step here, that hitting that Y key to split it is what we're after too. And I think that's under mesh. Yeah, there you go. So split by selection right there. So that's the Y. There's, there's where we get that Y keyboard shortcut there. So mesh, split, selection. And why we've done that is later on we'll be able to just grab a little piece of the base and then select all the base. Grab one of the columns and select all the columns. Grab the capital and select all the capital. But if we didn't make that little break right there, then if we selected the, the capital here, it would also select all the arches. And we don't want to select the arches. We want to leave this little kind of ceiling of arches alone. So if we clicked on this here without that break, then it would grab the arches as well. So that's the whole reason why we're doing this.
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide at this point now the sample because it's starting to get in our way a little bit. So now we have this this object. It's still part of it. So if I go out into object mode here, that top piece is still part of the of the capital over here. But we're going to hit tab there to enter it. I'm going to grab this face here. I'm going to extrude to two. So just E and two, and then grab any one of the other faces as long as it's 90 degrees. So we can do this one E and two and hit enter. And you could do the back side. Doesn't matter which way you're facing here. It's it's fine because it'll be all the same. The last thing I want to do though is before we exit out of the, the edit mode here is to grab one of these faces. Remember that keyboard shortcut to where we can move the 3D cursor around? Well, I'm going to do that shift S to get that 3D cursor here. And you'll see that one of them is cursor to selected. So if I go to cursor to selected, that's the way we move the 3D cursor when we added the first of the four columns down over here. We did that little command before. So we've moved the 3D cursor right up onto that face. So when we add a cylinder for our Boolean operation next here, it'll be right where we want it to go, right there on that face. But we're going to edit, uh, leave the edit mode, exit out of the edit mode right now. That's really important to hit that tab key because we're going to want to add a cylinder that's going to be a cookie cutter to chop out that arc. So here, I'll show you what we're doing here. We're, we're adding a cylinder right here. You can see how that arch is actually like a cylinder that's, you know, an invisible cylinder here. That's exactly what we're going to do. Listen carefully. I'm about to give you a set of instructions which you must follow to the letter. So we want to add that cylinder as a separate piece because we want to take that cylinder and chop it out of this piece. But if we add the cylinder in edit mode, it will be part of itself. So it can't really subtract from itself. So that's why we need to move into object mode, type in shift A to add a cylinder. And it's going to add a cylinder, you know, facing upward. But look at where I put it. It put it right there on the 3D cursor, just like the cursor in your Word document there. You know, you start typing right where the cursor is. That's handy. We're going to go ahead and use the rotate here and just going to be lazy here and use the red axis here. You look at that red axis. Remember, red is the X over there. You can always look up at the compass rows if you forget. But red is the X axis. And we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. But rather than move into a side view, we can just type in R and X. So basically, that's using the red axis as like the hinge, you know, the pivot point, and then 90 and then enter or return, and that will spin that little drum there 90 degrees, which is exactly what we want. And then what's probably going to be worth doing here, I'll hit the tilde key and go into front view there, and now we're looking straight at it, and we're going to push this guy down a little bit until it's somewhere maybe right in through there. You can see it's starting to cut through where it's not quite cutting through the, the object. You can scale this if you want. It doesn't matter. You can just scale it right here in object mode. That's fine. That looks pretty good. Although do we do be uh, want to be aware uh, that it wants to go all the way through the back. So grab that little axis there and make it look you know like that. It doesn't really matter exactly where it is. As long as you like the way it looks in this front view here that we're not, you don't want it to be up so far. If it's up over here, you know, you might accidentally cut into some stuff you don't want or your arch is going to be all the way that you down so just get it to the point where you can see if we zoom in there we can see it's just clearing that corner it's not catching our um our, our trim right over there and there's a little bit of a face right over there and that's just going to be tidy tidy you could bring it if you could you could get it right up on there if you wanted to or maybe use some snapping but you know we don't need to we just need to sort of make sure that it's not cutting the archway short so if it looks like that you're good let me hit the seven key to get into top view or use the tilde or click the green, excuse me, the blue button over there to do that. And what I'm going to do is make a copy of this, but just to save us some time so we don't have to do the Boolean operation twice, I'm going to hit tab to get into edit mode and make a copy of this cylinder in the cylinder's edit mode. So we're going to have one object when we exit out of the edit mode instead of two that we have to do. We have to cut both arches separately. This is just saving us a little time. So I'm going to shift D to make a duplicate. I already have. So if I hit enter and then and type in R and 90, then I've just spun the second cylinder 90 degrees, and I'm going to hit enter. And now I can again just sort of eyeball it over here. I'm going to grab the other cylinder, and then we'll check. I'm going to hit the three key. You're going to a side view. Maybe I can swing around to the back side there so I don't have the other cylinder in the way there. That looks pretty good. So that's basically, don't move it at all on the on the Y. Just spin it around in top view and just use the, the move handle there so you don't accidentally make one arch taller than the other. This way I know they're exactly the same height there because I just moved it in top view and then just slid it back and forth a little bit. So we're all set and good to go here. I'm going to hit the tab key and exit out of that. So you can see we have cylinder here, but both cylinders are part of that. So the Boolean operation that we're going to do right now, we can we only have to do it once because it's going to take it's going to cut both sides out at the same time, which is just nice. I mean, you could do it as two separate steps, but why work twice as hard? So 
we're going to take the cylinder out of the arch here. So we want to select that. That's our cube 002 over there. I'm going to click on that because that's what we want to add the modifier to. So I keep on using this word Boolean. If you're not familiar with that word, there it is right there. Boolean, Boolean. That is a, a just a mathematical if then kind of statement. So if it's this, then do this sort of thing. Um, so what we're going to use it for is to cut out. Boolean is a great way of thinking of it as a, as a cookie cutter, a clip surface that subtracts solids, you know, those kind of terms are used for this as well. But that Boolean operation just means you're going to weld two pieces together that are overlapping, or you're going to use one piece to cut out the other piece. And there's also an option of intersecting. So you can make the space where the two, like a Venn diagram, you know, the little cat's eye that you get from a Venn diagram, that could be like the space that you want at the end. But more often than not, 90% of the time when you're doing a Boolean operation, what you really want to do is this difference. And it's set to difference by default now. That's handy. And it's actually already done it. So um, we don't need, oh, actually, it's it's going to do it as soon as we tell it what object to use. So I'm going to click on this and select cylinder out of this list. And also if you have a bunch of cylinders and you're not sure which one it is, you can click on the little eyedropper that's there. If I delete that. You can see there's an eyedropper and I can come over and click on the object as well. And that's another way to do that. So it's two separate ways to load in what the object is. So now it's actually done that. And in order for us to see what it's done, we can hide in the viewport, click that little eyeball there, and that's hiding that cylinder. And we can see, oh yeah, pretty good. We've done our arches over there. That's exactly what we want. The nice thing about this is, is that we have not applied this modifier yet. So if you decide, oh, actually, I'm not sure I like that. It looks like it's a little too high. Maybe, maybe I want to grab this and scooch it down a little bit more or make them slightly bigger or whatever. That's non-destructive at this point. We haven't done anything to make us not be able to do that. In fact, actually, I think I, I actually do want to do that. I might just want to pull that down a little bit more. I'm getting more over here, but what I am getting is a little bit more thickness to the top of my uh, arches. That way the arch isn't quite so slender. I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. So you can make all of these changes. In fact, you don't even need to get rid of the cylinder. We're going to go ahead and delete it because we won't need it after we apply this modifier. But you don't have to. You can save this step. You can do a whole bunch of other modeling and then see if you still like something. But since we know this is good, since I've already made the model. It's only a model. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and apply this Boolean over here. And now we can come back to the cylinder and just delete it. Let's just right click down there and hit delete and just delete it from the list there. Or you can just select it in the list and hit the delete button. That'll do the same thing. So that's basically it. There is our, you know, sort of default uh, archway. If we go back to our sample there, it looks basically the same, except we've added our little bit of extra trim over there because ours is swankier than the first one that I did. Uh, and we're all set and ready to go. The last thing we want to do, I'll close that, is join all these together. So let me center this up here a little bit more. I want to join all these pieces together into one object. So if you haven't already applied this modifier, this actually would be a good time to make a copy of this with all the loose parts here and just do like what I've done over here, add it to another um, object here. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. We'll do that together. I'm going to just drag a marquee around all of this here. I'm going to say shift D and make a little copy. We'll just pull it off, set it over here somewhere. And then what we're going to do is add this to a new collection. The way you do that is to uh, grab them all and hit the M key and that's going to say move to a new collection. So I'm going to click new collection over there. We're just going to call this spare or something, I don't know, call it spare or backup or whatever you want and say, okay. So now if we ever want to come back in, if we do something that you know we don't like later on, we've got this little copy over here. So there it is spare. I'm going to close that little uh, drop down over there because we don't need to see that all open. And I'm just going to hide it. Now do be aware that it's going to show up in the render. So you want to move this somewhere out of the way. If you open up this little filter button here and we turn on the uh, viewport and the render settings over there, we can then hide this. So we click on the camera that will hide it from uh, a render, but it will be, sh will show up in the view. So for example, our spare here is hidden. Uh, and if I look through the camera here, let's see if we can see the spare in the view. We barely see it over there. Uh, I'm going to hide it here by closing the eye there on the sample. I'm going to hit F12 to do the render and oh, there it is. Oh, it's even got a material on it. Uh, it's like, oh, it's showing up. Why is this weird thing showing up in my render? Where is that coming from? Well, it may be simply something that you've hidden, but you haven't hidden it from the camera. The camera can still see it. You've hidden it from the viewport, but not the the camera. So that's one way to hide that or simply just make sure that the spare here is somewhere, you know, way out of the scene. So it's way out of the way over here um, and it won't be anywhere inside of the camera view. We'll talk more about this camera view here in a little bit. Um, so that's it. We're ready to go. Oh, wait, <laughs> except the last thing we wanted to do here. Let me uh, hide that spare again and the sample. Get those both out of the way. I'm going to grab all uh, the parts of this one, two and three here, and I'm going to uh, 
hit the control or command J button there to join. So control or command J. I think you can even do that in the right context menu. Yeah, there, there it is right there. <clears throat> join. So uh, right click and select join there or control and command J. And that's now made this all one object. So you can see it's now cube two. It just took one of the names and made it cube two. So now it's probably worth a time to pop in here and we'll call this arches. Um, and that will be some good file management there to keep things tidy. So that's it. So we've made the first of our, our uh, array of arches that in the next video we'll come back and turn this into a whole forest of these columns.